Hey everyone, Greta here, and welcome to today's episode talking about how to be better in yoga. It is super tempting and so easy to think that way because we are always, always drawn to the physical postures. You know, and whenever our eyes can see, we will judge and we will compare. It's a very human thing, so don't try to deny it. And our eyes can see other practitioners' physical practice as, as well, like in the same yoga room setting, and also on social media. And as well, you know, there are a lot of yoga studios that have mirrors, and you know, whenever there are mirrors, we would look, and we would also look at our bodies as well. So it is super convenient to judge. Um, even though yoga is not just about you know the physical shapes and forms. You know it is one of the limbs, and it is one of the. I I can actually dare to say it is the the most、um, interesting way to get someone to start a yoga practice. You know,、um, so you know all those like interesting shapes. It's just very tempting. So, and also yoga is always. You know, marketed as a as a a way to become more mobile or become more flexible. So, a lot of people would sign up for yoga class because of that. Now, talking about the yoga as a physical practice, you know, over time when you have a regular yoga practice, then your body would change depending on that particular method that you practice. You know, our bodies would get more mobile and, or maybe even stronger. You know, if you're doing a lot of chaturangas and planks, you know, warrior ones and warrior threes, and yeah, you know.、Um, however, even with a regular yoga practice, physical yoga practice,、uh, we cannot expect our body to have to evolve in a very linear way. And there are actually a few reasons. <clears throat> excuse me. So one of the reasons is our genes.、Um, You know, some people are born more or more mobile. Some people are born with you know different shapes of pelvis. You know, so a lot of times the limitations of a body is not just because the muscles are tight; it's because of the bone structure. And some people are are more connected to you know how they move or how they use the muscles. So they, for those people, they might be able to gain more strength. Faster than the people who are less aware of how to use the muscles. So there are a lot of different、um, reasons in that element alone. And also, even if they claim that the bodies are very very stiff, if genetically they are born with more mobile spine or more mobile hips, then over time they would, you know, their their range of motion would. Would increase a lot more and a lot faster than those of us whose genes don't, you know, offer us a a more mobile spine or more mobile hip. So sometimes you just have to affect, accept fate as is. But then you know we don't have to be you know too disappointed about it. You know our bodies are our bodies. Another reason is our daily lifestyle habits. You know,、uh, the nature of our work. You know, do we sit at the desk the whole time, or do we stand a lot? Do we have to carry things,、uh, heavy things? And also, how we carry our bodies throughout the day. You know, some people like to slouch forward. Some people like to arch their spine a lot, just to you know, just to maintain this you know upright posture. Some people like to lean to the left hip. Some people like to lean towards the right pelvis. All that. So that would also have an effect. And also the quality of rest. Sometimes, you know, you have four hours of sleep and you just wake up feeling even more, you know, disgusting than you,、uh, than before you had a nap. Or, you know, if you have a very very good rest, you know, a very nice bed and vacation, that would also affect your body. And then, injuries and strains. You might have had had an injury a long time ago, and. Not just your your body might have healed, but if your brain hasn't completely recovered from that experience, then maybe that would limit you. And also strains. You know, over time, if you use 
your neck and shoulders too much. You know, if you're using uh, the computer mouse a lot of、uh, very very often, causing you a lot of stress in the neck shoulder area, then no matter how much you stretch or you strengthen that part of the body, it's still not going to give you a very that that that. That change or that growth that you might be expecting. So when you practice yoga, it is perfectly normal for the growth of our body to be like a winding road or like, kind of like a roller coaster. Now, sometimes you go up, sometimes you're gonna come down. But then, I think that's part of the journey. That's kind of cool in a way. That it's 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 kind of like a surprise every time. And you just have to keep a very open mind and accept whatever surprise that the body is going to give you. Having said that, if you do want to have a more、um, a bolder change to the body,、um, there are a few elements that you might want to consider. Is that the body is could get used to. You know habits. You know the the way that we practice, the time that we practice, the kind of practice that we do. So if you're looking for a change, then consider maybe doing a different method of practice. Let's say if you're very used to doing,、um, let's say Ashtanga, maybe throw in a couple of Yin sessions. You know, just to balance things out. Or if you are If all you do is yin, then perhaps you might want to throw in like maybe a vinyasa class, you know, something just to give the body something foreign, something new, so that the body and the mind would need to recalibrate before it becomes familiar again. So that could be a good change. And also, the practice of the day. Let's say you always practice,、um, you know, in the morning. Perhaps switch it to in the evening. Um, if you always practice in the evening, maybe switch it to the afternoon. You know, of course, if time allows. Because,、um, generally speaking, our our body、uh, function actually function better in the morning and less in the evening. However, that's according to the textbook. For me, actually, function better. Like my body is a lot more mobile and stronger in the evening. Even though、um, I might be working like the whole day already,、um, it's for me. It's just my body. Um, so whenever I have to practice really early in the morning,、um, it's often it's often quite a a quite a challenge, I would say. But most importantly, we cannot be better, quote unquote, in yoga because it's not measurable. No, when something can be better. Then there needs to be some sort of measurement, be it designed by a individual or a system. But then such an individual or system doesn't exist in the yoga realm. You know, so this kind of measurement only exists inside your head. So you are kind of like the designer of the rules and regulations. So. You need to kind of go past that in order to truly enjoy the beauty of a yoga practice. As long as you're always thinking about how to improve, how to get better, da da da, you're always stuck in that point. And no matter how much your body is actually like improving, quote unquote, like maybe getting more mobile, getting stronger, maybe your mind is getting more calm, all that stuff. If you're not able to let go of this concept, then you will always be chasing after something. You will never be—I wouldn't say content, but just accept the reality that you are what you are, and you are who you are at that moment in time. And also, yoga isn't just bound to the physical forms. To me, yoga is just a tool for you to learn to have a better understanding and connection to your body, like. How your body works, your muscles, you know, your everything that's inside you. It's not the outer appearance anymore. Yes, you can look at yourself in the mirror and think, "Oh my gosh, my arm is," you know, and let's say in a war two, my left arm is lower than my right arm. What should I do? Stuff like that. But、uh, that's just the facade of it. Yoga is. It's kind of like the key to let you to go inside you and really feel. Hey, how am I doing today? You know. 
Am I forcing my body into all these crazy shapes? Am I holding my breath or am I, you know, letting the shape slowly marinate into the body? You know, yoga shapes are more like, you know, um, you know, like pepper and salt and all those like soybean sauce, whatever to marinate into the body and not the actual mold itself. So we need to be clear about the two. And are we allowing ourselves to take an extra breath? Or are we saying, no, I gotta get into this leg behind the head. So even if I hold my breath like crazy, my face turn red, I'm gonna get into it. Or now nah, I'm just gonna you know, chill in this leg hugging shape for a little while, maybe double leg pigeon and pigeon for a while before I try to ease into it if I can. So instead of thinking how to be better in yoga, maybe think about it in a different way. Can we be more holistic about it? Now, because again, I keep stressing the yoga shape is just one of the limbs. You know, there are eight limbs, okay? Asana, the, the yoga posture, the yoga shapes is just one of the limbs. So there are so many different layers in a yoga practice. You know, are you paying attention to your breath? Are you paying attention to your intentions when you enter the room, when you practice yoga? You know, are you being authentic and truthful? You know, are you just, you know, rushing through? Are you enjoying the journey or thinking that the journey is getting in the way to get to your destination? And really, why do we always have to be better? Why can't we just be? We are trained, we're conditioned to think that we need to be better every, every single time. But when we think about it that way, we are never really taking the time to kind of check out the surroundings at that moment in time. And if we are not willing to stop and pause and look at the surroundings, look at what's happening in that moment, then it's just kind of rushing through and then and then we we just you know and then our life ends in the in the very very end and then you know are we are we truly being alive or are we rushing through life without really knowing about it? So have a think. Sometimes being there is far more important and far more valuable than trying to be better. That's it for my sharing for today. And I'll see you again soon. Take it easy.